Hello folks, it's Bob Doman uh, back again. Hope everyone is doing well. Uh, it's actually looking like it's finally maybe spring here in the mountains of Utah, which is great. Seeing some sun helps a lot when you're home all the time, obviously. Uh, I'd like to talk to you on this video about kind of the foundation of education and what you can do right now while you're home to help work on that foundation. You know, one of the one of the problems with most families and most situations where kids are in school and doing all kinds of things, uh, the foundations, the really important pieces of what determines, really determines education and what provides a foundation for your child's ultimate future gets lost in the in the mix. All right, just so much stuff, and it's a matter of the stuff. It's a matter of getting to this class. It's a matter of getting ready for this test. It's a matter of getting this grade. It's, you know, it's, it's a bunch of stuff. So let's talk about, you know, the really important pieces, and in truth, pieces you can start addressing right now while you're home with your kids. All right. So let's let's start off with what we're trying to accomplish with education. If you will, ultimately how well we do is a reflection of a few basic things, including have we taught our kids to love learning? You know, everyone knows you do well with what you like. If you love it, you do really well with it. You know, if I have a child who likes to read the problem isn't teaching the child to read. The problem is getting away the, the book from under their covers at night that they're trying to read with a flashlight. Right. So if you will, turning the kids on to learning and teaching them to be lifelong learners is about as foundational as you get. And sadly, if, if you will, what is happening with most of our kids whether they are attending school or doing traditional home education, which I'm not fond of at all. Uh, there's much better ways to do it than is typically done. You know, it's all about the stuff. All right, got all this curriculum to cover, all this work to do. All right. You know, if, if I have time to learn something new, I don't approach it into, oh dear, I've got it. how much time do I have to spend working on this? Uh, you know, no, no, you know, I love learning. And it's an opportunity if I have the time and the chance to learn something new. Now, I am a lifelong learner. I'm learning something every day. And how tragic is it that so many of our kids are being taught that learning is an ugly thing, a nasty thing, it's work, it's hard, all right? And often that they don't do it so well. So start off with, we want to teach them to love learning. You know, I, I teach our families we work with. If you're trying to teach, you know, if you're going to work on math, you're going to work on reading, if you're going to work on a science project or whatever, your first job is to teach the kids to love whatever it is you're doing. Okay? It's the first job. And you do what you have to do to teach them to love it before you worry about teaching them something specific about whatever that thing is. Teach them to love it first. Teach them to love learning. Yeah. Another BP, you know, and your home, you can do that. You know, you have the opportunity at home to teach your kids. All right. Find something they're interested in, whatever in the world it might be. All right. Whatever. And get into it with them, investigate it with them, explore it with them, have fun with it with them. All right, teach them that learning is fun. All right, most kids, if you get rid of all the stuff around it, you know, love it. They love the time with you. They love the time exploring things that they they find interesting. They like. You, know, you absolutely can do that now. You know, and if if you will, if your if your school is sending home assignments and things for your kids still, you know, 
compare what you could do, what you can do, with what those assignments look like. All right, get get the difference. All right, see what really is going to produce the outcomes that you want. Okay. So the second thing is teaching your kids to be readers. Uh, the whole subject of reading and education drives me a bit nuts. Um, you know, actually teaching reading individually is amazingly easy. I mean, we teach, you know, typical kids to read when they're two, three years old. Heck, we teach kids with Down syndrome to, to, to read when they're two and three years old. Uh, you know, it's not hard if you do it based on that individual which requires one-to-one -one and also it requires you understand what in the world you're doing, all right? You know, no, it's not one size fits all and good luck, all right? So first off, you know, to teach a kid to love reading, they need to be successful with reading. So the more you can individualize what you're doing, the more you can tailor it to them, target it to them, fit them, keep it short and sweet, make it fun, all right? Teach them to read and then target material to them, give them time to read, All right? You know, another, you know, issue with most of our kids in the country is they've got so much school, they've got so much curriculum, they've got so much homework that when the kids have an extra 10 or 15 minutes, the last thing they think about is, gee, I think I'll pull out another book. All right. So we need to provide a daily schedule that's realistic, that provides the kids an opportunity to, to explore and to read and to learn how to enjoy reading. And we need to expose them to a variety of things. So we teach them, you know, to enjoy reading, all right, and learn how to read fiction, enjoy novels, and preferably learn to, to read the classics. We also need to teach them to read for information. And as you're doing these things where you're exploring different things, teach them how to search and explore and gather information and read about it and learn about it. You know, I'm so jealous with kids today. You know, what you've got on the internet is just mind boggling when I think about my life when I was a kid, you know, and when I was a kid, our library was in a house, and I had to ride my bike three miles to that place to, to find a book, all right? And, it, you know, it was in a house. It wasn't like there were a zillion books. My prized possession was a set of encyclopedias, you know, but what kids have access to today is incredible. And they tell you, gee, Mom, i like to learn about giraffes. I saw this neat giraffe in this movie. I just saw it. All right, let's go learn about giraffes. Bang, you're there. You can go learn about giraffes. It's all there. All the information you'd ever want to know, it's sitting there. All right. And again, we teach the kids to love learning. And we teach the kids to read and become readers. They can go and start learning all these things. All right. Another big piece in terms of that foundation has to do again with the kids' time. And one of the things I wish for virtually every child I work with, we work with it at ACD, is they can that they have the opportunity to discover their strengths, their interests, and their passions, and hopefully be able to spend their life making a good living doing those things they're passionate about. You know, that's a great thing to be able to wish for any individual. You know, the number of people who are, hey, getting up in the morning and, hey, going to a job and doing something they really don't like, let alone passionate about, you know, that's so sad. You know, I love what I do. I mean, you know, I, I never perceive it as, as work. It's, a, it's an opportunity. It's a privilege to do what I do. You know, and I wish that for, for all the kids. 
you know, find that thing that you love doing, that you have talent for, that you're passionate about, and develop all the abilities and skills so you can spend your life doing that thing, whatever it is. You know, and I mean, whatever it is. Okay? You know, getting up in the morning and doing what you love doing and like what you're doing, I mean, that's, that's as good as it gets, really. Well, another foundational piece that's that's really important and you know something I've been working on for for 50 years and trying to get people to understand is that we have the ability to not only put information into kids brains teach them things we have the ability to make them all smarter and in NACD, whether we're talking about a child with a brain injury or a child with Down syndrome or a child with supposedly learning problem, attention problem, typical gifted, every single one of those individual children, we are working on their ability to process information. And your ability to process and manipulate and use information, if you will, ultimately determines how smart you are. Now, the, the foundational pieces of that are short auditory and visual short-term memory, auditory and visual working memory. That's the foundation of what's called executive function. Uh, it's the ability to visualize, think in pictures, conceptualize, think in words. That's what we call that. We put that all under the, the title of, of processing. And... It's something that typically develops for the first seven or so years of life that pretty much stops unless you're doing something to develop it, All right? You know, again, looking at my cross-section of kids, I can ignore whatever labels they might have ever had, and I can look at where their processing level is, and that's going to correlate where they're functioning. Okay. I mean, as an example, I got a call the other day uh, from one of my kids uh, who, was, who was graduated from NACD. And you know, she, she calls me and FaceTimes me, you know, every few weeks. And just a happy, delightful young lady. All right. she's, she's got her own townhouse. Uh, she's got a full-time job. She's got a very nice boyfriend, who's a guy with a degree in accounting, uh, you know, she drives, she goes, she lives a very, 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 very normal life, okay? She also happens to have Down syndrome. And she's able to have that life and function on that level because she has the processing ability to do it. Her processing skills are as good as and generally a bit better than most of her chronological typical peers. But I can't take a child who has lower functioning, lower processing, and have them function well. All right, I have to build those pieces that permit them to learn and permit them to think. And that's not a reflection of whatever that innate intelligence thing is. Right? It's a reflection of providing them with specific opportunities to develop it. Right? This is something you can start working on right now. Now, one of the things I would, I would encourage you to do, pretty, pretty simple thing. Uh, I'd like you to do a really simple test of all of your kids, family members, and if you can, friends, or people you know. And do a simple little thing to test auditory short-term memory. And to do that, you do a thing called a digispan test. Right? And to do that, you say a sequence of numbers at one second intervals in a monotone. All right? So start off with like four numbers. 
five, one, seven, three. So you say that to your child or whoever, and they repeat five, one, seven, three. They can do that. They've got an auditory digits band of four or more. Then you do five numbers, and you do six numbers, right? And see see how far they can go, all right? Well, they can't go any higher. That's where their auditory short-term memory is. Okay? Simple test. Then, if they can do at least four or five forward, you can test their auditory working memory. And to do that, you do essentially the same test, but you have them then repeat the numbers to you backwards. Okay? So, if you say five... One, two, eight. Say eight, two, one, five. And then the reverse is a four, right? And what I want you to do is kind of get a comparison. <clears throat> you know, look at the different kids, look at the different people who you have an opportunity to test. And kind of say, oh yeah, okay, you're, you're a five, you're a seven, you're a nine, right? Uh, and look at the correlation between that short-term memory, auditory short-term memory, working memory, and their, their general function. Just those two pieces. The same we you know we work on the visual and, and a lot of other aspects of it, but that's that's kind of the the foundation. All right, you know if you've got that kid and you say Johnny, I want you to go upstairs and get your socks and your shoes and bring them down uh, so we can put them on for you. And, you know, 10 minutes later, you're looking for Johnny and he's wandering around upstairs wondering what he's doing up there. You know, Johnny's got an auditory processing problem. All right. Uh, it's a very, very common problem. Matter of fact, you know, to give you a little different perspective on that, the vast, 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 vast majority of children who come to us labeled as having an attention deficit disorder, all right, or a learning disability actually have processing problems. You know, I mean, to give you a picture, you know, if you if you look at uh, typical eight-year-olds, all right, they should be able to do about seven numbers forward, five or six reverse, all right, short-term memory, working memory. Most of the kids who have issues with attention or with learning. All right, their processing isn't there. You know, that child with a deficit, attention deficit disorder, say in that second or third grade classroom, maybe has the processing they should have had when they were five years old. And guess what? They act like a child who's five years old. They have a short attention span, they're distractible, right? Because neurodevelopmentally, they actually are five. They're not seven, eight. And the solution to the problem is you build those skills. <laughs> Simple, you know. You don't, you don't drug in their brain and slow their brain down so they'll sit there quietly. All right. You build those skills that are the problem to begin with. All right. Build that basic neurological function of, of processing. Right. So it's something, you know, you need to be aware of right now, all right, pay attention to. And if you will, if you want to start working with your kids very simply, you can just work at that, all right? You know, so let's say they, they can repeat five numbers in a sequence. So give them six numbers in a sequence. You know, offer them a big carrot if they can do the six and I'm working at the six and do some fives and, you know, try to push that up. It's the same thing with the reverse. Right. I'll talk to them, you know, a lot more about this in, you know, in other videos. But look at these foundational pieces. You can teach your kids why they're home without pain, that learning is fun. Okay. Explore stuff with them. Learning is cool. Learning is fun. Learning isn't work. All right? And you can also teach them 
to love reading, which, which doesn't require a whole lot more than doing some shared reading with them, finding material that they really enjoy reading, right? opportunities to read, talk to them about what they read, and make it fun. Provide time in the day for them to kind of explore things, you know, broadly and find those things that they, they really like and enjoy and are interesting to them. You know, I've seen kids' lives turn around because they discovered a cool bug, all right, and it created a, a future for them. Uh, provide those opportunities and start take in, taking in and looking at where their processing skills are, all right, and start looking at that. And again, I'll talk more about that in a bit. Uh, but those are foundational pieces. That's so, these things are so much more important than a bunch of facts and figures and dates and definitions and stuff that the curriculum is filled with that you know darn well your kids are going to forget anyway. Okay? So, new perspective. Good luck. See you soon.